radio friend. You know, uh, spring is starting next week and maybe you're thinking about going out and hunting for morel mushrooms. We're gonna talk about mushrooms today. I have a, a, a real expert with us, Stan Hudson. Welcome to Radio Friends, oh, Stan. Thank you, Paul. Uh, from the Mid-Missouri chapter of the Missouri Mycological Society. Good, I'm it's glad a big, you said fancy that. Fancy word for mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Now you've got uh, events coming up. Is it today and tomorrow? No, tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday. Saturday and Sunday. So what's going to happen Saturday? So Saturday, I'm going to be doing a program called Mushroom Madness down at Runge Nature Center down in Jeff City. So what is Mushroom Madness? It's really to talk about mushrooms and how to uh, find mushrooms by looking up. You would never think that you need to look up to find mushrooms. but The morels? Yeah, even morels. You're, they're... Telling, you're telling me that the mor you can look up and find morels growing in the trees? No, but I can look up and find more mushrooms than you can looking down because they grow with the trees. And so knowing those relationships and what trees they grow with and how to identify those trees can be a key way to find mushrooms. Okay. And so we're going to talk more about some of those tree relationships. So it's, so what, what are the best trees that morels are going to go around or grow under? Well, it, it always varies by season, but there's some traditional time true like uh, dead elms. If you yeah. find a dead or dying elm, you can sometimes find mushrooms around that. And okay. then, then there are other ones that they're associated with. Sometimes people find them under cedars around here, uh -huh. under cottonwoods, um, sycamore trees. and Well, that's about maples. almost all the trees that we have here. There, there's a lot. And like I say, that's that's the trick is figuring out which trees are hitting this year. But okay. once you know that, you're good to so go. So tomorrow you're going to do a seminar on looking up to find mushrooms. Yes. And then what's going on? And on then on Sunday, we have an expert who's a, a great author, mushroom author, Michael Quo, who's from Illinois, who's done a book on morels and also edible mushrooms. And he's going to come down and do a presentation out at the MDC regional office out on East Gans Road from noon to two on a contemporary look at stinkhorns. So what I don't know if you've ever seen a stinkhorn. It's a funny looking mushroom that, that you find in the summer that you often smell it before you see and, it. And, and can you eat it? You can, but most people don't. Okay. <laughs> so morels are the most popular mushroom around here. Certainly. Right? And these people who hunt morels are really fanatics about keeping their area secret, even if it's on your own property, that you have guests coming looking for mushrooms and they find some, they're not gonna tell you where they found them. Oh yes. Yeah, why is that? Well, you wanna keep your mushroom spots a secret. I mean, they're, <laughs> they're very special spots. I've known people to put up no trespassing signs on other people's property to keep people out of there. Really? Because they're mushroom spots And, and there. you told me that even there's family disputes over finding the oh, mushrooms. Oh yes, fathers and sons will not speak to each other <laughs> over, over mushroom spots. All right, so if you want to find out about how to look up and find mushrooms tomorrow at... Uh, That'll be at 10.30, 10.30 to noon, down at Runge at Nature Runge, Center. And then on Sunday? That'll be from noon to two out at the MDC regional office here in Columbia. Okay, and is there a website people can go to if they want yes, more information? Yes, if you go to momyco.org, that's M-O-M-Y-C-O dot org. We have a calendar of events there that lists all of we'll these. We'll tell you all about the events, okay? And hopefully this will be a good year for finding morel mushrooms. We will see. It'll John, a couple uh, Stan, more weeks. Thank you, Stan. Thank you, Thanks Paul. Thanks for coming by. Now we turn to a guy who hadn't been on here for a, a, a while, John Wiggins. Good, good to have you back. here, John. Thank you, Paul. And you've got your little daughter sitting yeah. here on your lap. Who is this? This is Catherine. She Hi, Catherine. Is my little buddy this year. Yeah, good yeah. to have you here, Catherine. And John, you are the music director of Carousel Production, yeah. uh, production of Les Miserables. Les Mis, yeah. yeah. So when it's, oh, you started last week, didn't we you? We started last week, uh, opened on the 7th, and we have tonight and tomorrow night left. Uh, great show, wonderful cast. So how how is the show, how was it last weekend? Fantastic. Good. We have, a, we have a cast to die for. We also have a mini orchestra to die for. And You've got a mini orchestra in there, too. We have a mini too. orchestra. Okay, for people who may not be familiar with the storyline, tell us about Les Miserables. Essentially, it's a story of redemption. Jean Valjean, the main character, goes to jail for stealing a loaf of bread to feed his sister's family. After he, he gets paroled... He, he goes to jail for stealing a loaf, loaf of, bread of bread to feed the sister's family. And ends up spending 20 years in prison. 
uh, you know, set in the time of the French Revolution. So incredible uh, story about the, you know the social fabric. Mm -hmm. uh, and as he travels through his journeys, we we find him uh, with a daughter Cosette uh, that he adopts. The greatest thing is that at the end of the show, there is redemption not only for the world, but especially Jean Valjean who gets to go off to heaven, and his daughter Cosette. Uh, gets to break the cycle and gets to live her life with her love, Marius. Yeah, and the music is just it's stunning. gorgeous. It is stunning. You know, it's been quite a feat for a small community theater to do three hours of nonstop music. Uh, but it, it's, it's three it's, hours it's of fantastic. nonstop music. Absolutely. How many people are in the cast? We have about seventy in our cast. Oh my goodness, that's almost a whole town. <laughs> <laughs> For us, yes, it is. <laughs> so you, you got seventy. You got seventy in the cast. We've got about seventy. Oh, in the cast. Oh, yeah. how long? I mean, this is this is a massive musical to produce. Absolutely. How long have you been working on this? We actually did auditions in November uh, and worked with the principals from November to January. Began with the chorus in January and have been going full force ever since. Is everybody that's in the production? from the area? We're really blessed. We have a lot of area locals, but we have a draw from Kirksville and Moberly. Uh, and so we have, you know, folks coming from about 35 to 40 minutes. We actually have orchestra members from Colombia and Mexico. Now that's, uh, a, that that's coming. dedication. Absolutely. That's dedication. When you were rehearsing, I guess you're, you're not rehearsing anymore since you've already done, right? but when you were rehearsing, how many hours did you put into that rehearsal on a daily basis? Typically we spend three to four days a week, three hours a day, and then Sunday afternoons also uh, individual rehearsals, four now, to five hours. And, and you know, you've got to love what you're doing Absolutely. to give that much time for a long period of time <laughs> to rehearse and rehearse and rehearse. Was there ever, and this is a big endeavor, was there ever a point before you opened and you said, oh my goodness, are we going to be okay for this or not? You know, actually, I think every production hits that. That's a that's kind of a norm. And, you know, when you're about three quarters of the way through and, you know, you've, you've done the blocking, but not everything's perfect. And the, the blocking obstructs the singing and, you know, all of, all of that jazz. And people kind of look at each other and everybody is cranky. But then all of a sudden, you know, one day the light bulb goes on and everything starts clicking. And, every, and then you add the orchestra and you add the lights and you add the costumes and the makeup and everybody says, whoa, this was really worth it. And you know what? We're all really good friends still. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the fact that you're doing such a big production in a small community, that's outstanding. Absolutely. That's, okay, been. so make the pitch. It uh, runs... Uh, Tonight, tomorrow night, we open at 7 o'clock. Uh, the theater doors are open at 5.30. And your location? We are downtown Macon uh, on Rollins Street. If people want advanced tickets, how do they do uh, it? Give us a call at 660 346 one one zero zero. Okay, six six zero three four six one one zero zero. Absolutely. John, thank you so much thank for coming you, by. And thank you, young lady, for being with us. Monday, Larry Brown will be with us. Our program directed by Travis McMillan, Reynolds Journalism Institute. Audio is Pat Akers from KBIA. Our floor director is Connor Hickox, and our assistant producer and guest coordinator, Uncle James Mauser. Bye bye.